Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Salman Iqbal here. You can follow me on Twitter at Salman Iqbal. On this channel, we talk about everything cloud native. In the last video, we talked about what happens when you create a pod in Kubernetes. In this video, we'll be talking about what happens when you delete a pod in Kubernetes and how that can sometimes lead to traffic being dropped and what can we do to fix it. So let's get started. Imagine we have this user. Let's call him Dan. And the user is happily accessing this yellow website. And the website has two replicas running at all times. Sometimes the user gets a response from one pod and at other times the user gets response from the other pod. Nothing out of the ordinary, just our user Dan happily clicking away and watching yellow page with pleasure. Kubernetes admin enters the scene and they run the command kubectl delete pod pod one. And that command folks deletes the pod that our user was connected to. Now straight away, you start to think, what happens to the request that was sent? Will it be dropped? Most likely, we just deleted the pod. Not an ideal situation to be in. Let me give you an example of another scenario where you could potentially drop traffic. Let's say as a part of a deployment, we run two replicas of version one and we want to upgrade to version two using rolling update, you know, because we want zero downtime. In a rolling update, Kubernetes spins up a new pod with a new version. Once the pod checks have passed, it stops and deletes the old one and replaces it with the new one and attaches it to the service. If the old one was still serving some traffic, the traffic will be dropped. Kubernetes updates all pods in deployment. If there were some users being served, the traffic will also be dropped for them as well. Well, wasn't the promise of a rolling deployment that you will have zero downtime? In this case, it doesn't look like it. There are other use cases where we might not want to shut down the pod straight away. Perhaps the pod needs to write some logs to a remote location, needs to process requests before it's deleted, or maybe update some fields or rules before it's shut down. Before we talk about what can we do, let's look at what actually happens when the pod is deleted. When the request is sent to delete the pod, the request is received by the API server, which updates the information in the etcd database. When that happens, Endpoint controller gets notified, and that thing is in charge of looking after the endpoints. Endpoint is just the pod IP and the port. If you want to understand in a bit more detail about the endpoints and services, check out my other video, which is linked here. So now the endpoint controller has to start cleaning up. It removes the endpoint from services first. That change now has to be propagated to remove the endpoints from all its consumers. Everything has to go through API server. Up next, endpoint starts getting removed from Queue proxy, IP tables, ingress, and core DNS. All these things hold the endpoint information based on what kind of service is being used and if there is an ingress or not. While the endpoint controller does that, the kubelet is notified of the change. Kubelet is just a binary that runs in each worker node and is in charge of starting or stopping containers amongst other things. I want you to note that this flow is happening independently to the endpoint removal flow. One does not wait for the other. So Kubelet is also in charge of running what's known as a pre-stop hook. As the name suggests, pre-stop hook allows container to run given commands before it stops. Maybe you want to quit something before a container shuts down. Maybe you want to write something to the database before the container is stopped. And you might start to think, well, how do we define this pre-stop hook? Let's say we have a simple pod with a YAML file, which is running an Nginx image. For each of the containers, we can define this lifecycle block and in that block, we can run a pre-stop command. For example, you just want to say hi before you shut it down or stop a process or write something to a file or other things. So this is how you define a pre-stop command. And you can see some of the examples where it is useful. Let's go back to where we were. So after the pre-stop hook command is run, a sig term is sent to stop the container. This starts a graceful shutdown period, which by default is 30 seconds. If after this graceful shutdown period of 30 seconds, the container hasn't stopped, a sick kill command is sent via the API server to completely delete the pod. And sick kill, as you know, causes an immediate termination of the pod, which means that if you were still processing some traffic, it will be lost. So I'm gonna stick the two flows together to see what the problem is. This is the endpoint controller flow, where it's trying to remove all the endpoints from all the consumers. And now I have added the shutdown flow. Both of these flows are happening independently. Perhaps you can already spot where this can start to become problematic. 
Throughout the whole flow, the pod IP is still in use until it is deleted from everywhere, including QProxy, Ingress, Core DNS, and IP tables. But we know that the pod is only up until the end of the graceful shutdown period. After that period, it is down. The traffic during this time will still flow to the deleted pod. Now we are in a sad situation, or as none of these requests will be fulfilled. So how do we fix it? Now that you know the flow of what happens when you delete a pod, you have most likely figured out what the solution is. Let's just extend the graceful shutdown period. It adds a bit more gap between the endpoints getting removed from all the consumers and the pod getting deleted. So the answer is, let's just extend the graceful shutdown period. Now, how do we do that? Remember our lovely pod YAML? You can, at the container level, add the termination grace period seconds. If you know your container needs two minutes to serve all requests, so set it to that. Sometimes you have to do trial and error to figure out what the right value should be. You can always start with a higher value than you think you need to be on the safe side and then adjust it. There is also another way. If you insist and you do want to delete pods using kubectl, you can actually add grace period to your command line as an argument. Imagine you cannot wait. The pod is doing too much damage. You can go the other way. You can set the grace period to zero and get the pod deleted immediately. The same grace period argument can also be used when you're deleting the deployment with the same effect. So let's do a quick recap. When the API server receives a command to delete the pod, the endpoint controller starts deleting the endpoints from all the places it is stored. And while that is happening, the kubelet starts the shutdown process by initiating a graceful shutdown, which might not be long enough to process the requests already in the container, and new requests could still be sent to it. A fix for that is to increase the graceful shutdown period by adding termination grace period seconds to your container YAML. We can also use pre-stop to close all persistent connections, for example, database connections, and we just wait for all active requests to drain. Hope you found the information a bit useful on what happens when you delete the pod and what we can do in order to avoid dropping traffic. If you'd like more details on this topic, I have included some extra links to blogs that you might find useful in the description of the video. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. I already have some videos out on there and sharing with your friends and colleagues. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and stay safe.